Hey, everybody. Welcome to Long Story Short, the podcast. I'm Megan. I'm Wendy. Happy Tuesday, Wendy. How are you? I'm good. good. Real quick. Okay. A couple little housekeeping notes. If you want to find us outside of the podcast, you can find us at Megan and Wendy. Dot com. We have tons of holiday content, but there's tons of year-round non-holiday content if you just need a break. You can also follow us on Instagram, where we are Megan and Wendy LSS, or come join our Facebook group, where we are Long Story Shorties. Shorties. That's <laughs> I-E-S, people, mm-hmm. if you're looking for it. Um, send us an email, too. We love your emails. It's Megan and Wendy at gmail.com. And with that said, I think we have a couple. We do. Yay. So the first is from Heidi who says, I love it when you give reviews of your favorite products. I have to say, I tried Wendy's recent favorite product, Chipotle Bitchin' Sauce. (gasps) This is so amazing. Yes. It's so delicious. (laughs) I love dipping carrots and celery in it. Thank you. As for the Hallmark movies, I've watched a few. The first few I felt were pretty boring. Don't kiss a man (laughs) in a Christmas sweater and on the 12th day of Christmas. Blasphemy. What? She didn't like that one? (laughs) No, but she loved a Nashville Christmas. Thanks for the podcasts. I mean, you can stay since you liked a Nashville Christmas. Um, So funny that you mentioned the bitchin' sauce because I do love it. I was the one who originally recommended it and I hadn't bought yes. it in a while and I bought it at the grocery store and the Chipotle and the original both have red labels and I accidentally bought the original, which is fine. What does it taste like? It's it's more like, like hummus. A hummus. Yeah. But I was I was dipping carrots into it. I'm like, man, I remember this being so much more spicy. (laughs) It was the original. (laughs) So (laughs) next time I have to get the Chipotle. The original is good. doesn't really have a kick to it. But if you like that hummus flavor profile, that's what you'll get. Yeah, Um, I just picked some up yesterday. So I will be having it for lunch today. I'm so excited. (laughs) I am going to the grocery store today and it is on my list. Yeah. Now, I got a message from a friend. I actually got two messages from a friend who is catching up on the podcast. And she said, I'm just getting caught up on your podcast and I love them. I listened to three and four last night and it's funny how much I relate. I'm totally scared of being in the dark. And Chloe absolutely hates me talking to Sal, too. Throwback to when we were talking about how our teenagers are so embarrassed by us and my son hates it when I say hello to the mailman. So (laughs) Sal is the mailman. Oh, Sal's the mailman. Oh, yeah, that's funny. (laughs) And she sent another follow-up this morning, which you guys are going to want to listen up, because especially if you are local in Orange County, the title of the email is A Perfect Fit Fine Lingerie. And it was funny when I saw it come through. I was like, oh, that's like my brain was like, that's spam. And then I saw who it was from, and I opened it. I guess you can tell what episode I've on. You've got to go to this place. It's the best. I've always struggled with getting bras. Connie is the owner. She's phenomenal. Next time you need a bra, you have to go here. So we'll leave the link. It is in Tustin. So if you're in Southern California, this is the place you want to go. A perfect fit, fine lingerie. Ask Connie. That's my 2021 goal is to get some new bras that fit nicely. Yes. Oh, I love it. I love the info from everybody. Please keep sending us your messages, your emails, your DMs. We love it. We do. Speaking of things we love. Yeah. Okay. Anybody who knows my family, we are Advent calendar people. (laughs) We have lots of Advent calendars. Um, We do a big, giant family Advent calendar that the four of us share. And then Mm -hmm. the kids each have a calendar that my mom fills for them every year. And I bought myself two. (laughs) And then one of our neighbors brought one over for the dog. So we have six advent calendars running in our house right now. So many questions. Is the dog one the one from Trader Joe's? It is. And it's so cute because he's gotten used to us going over there and opening it. So as soon as he sees me go over there, he's so excited. So he's in on the advent calendar game, too. We have that one. Um, Also, I have been upset that you're not sharing your daily jams on Instagram. (laughs) Can you tell the people? 
Tell the people about your jams. So I am getting a jam advent calendar. I shared it as one of my favorite things, my Megan and Wendy approved item a while back. And it's the Bon Maman jam calendar. And it has a little mini jar of jam. And I love it. Who doesn't want a tiny jar of jam every morning to put on your toast? Have you been eating them every day? Not every day. Mostly because we don't have good toast bread right now. <laughs> like, I don't want it on, like, wheat toast. I like a good crunchy sourdough toast. So yeah. that is also on my list for the day. So I can really go nuts for my jam. <laughs> but, Wendy, on what? December 1st, you sent me a message saying, like, oh, I forgot I had all these advent calendars. I failed. They start on December 1st. There was no fail. No, because I'm a perfectionist, so it needs to come out, like, that morning, not in the evening. So, so I've just given up completely? It's over? No, <laughs> it's not. I took the three dog ones I have from Trader Joe's. Yes, I bought one for each dog. Of course. And then I got a chocolate one for my daughter from Trader Joe's. I only bought bought one this year. Previous years, I've bought several of them because I like the different designs on them. But then like she would be eating a handful of chocolates before heading off to school in the morning. Yeah. So I only bought one this year. Um, and then I have an old like Pottery Barn Kids felt wall advent calendar with yes, the little have, pockets. We have one of those. It, one, it's not out like hanging up in my house yet and two that means it's not filled so I just feel like I've failed it already look I think the pre-filled calendars we have the felt one too one of them ours is shaped like a Christmas tree yes we have the same one uh, but we don't we don't use it anymore my daughter wanted to hang it and we did hang it because it's cute but for some reason, we're having the weirdest problem in our house this year. We hang so many of our Christmas decorations by command hooks. We mm -hmm. hang our stockings by command hooks because I don't like stocking hangers. They just feel like, especially when I had little kids, I don't anymore, but I felt like someone was going to yank on a stocking and those heavy holders were going <laughs> to come down and like brain somebody. Yes. So we hang ours with command hooks and you can't see them because the garland covers of it. Course. Those keep popping off. We hang wreaths on windows in our house every year. Those command hooks keep popping off. And we hang this advent calendar with a command hook on our pantry door every year. That wouldn't stay. The command hooks have revolted. And yes, before you send me an email, I know you have to set them for 24 hours. We have done that with each and every one. And they refuse to stay. They just are flying off of our walls. Okay. Uh, are you... I can't remember with command hooks. Do you have to like clean the area with like rubbing alcohol before you put it up? And I did that. Yes. Okay. So I didn't do it the first round, I will admit, because we never have. But then when they started to fall off, I went through very carefully, cleaned, made sure it was completely dry. And then we put them up. We even let the second time we did it, let them set for two days. So they're on there before you add the item. And they're just I took a picture and posted it to Instagram yesterday. One of our wreaths just crashed to the floor. <laughs> I just left it sitting there. I was like, I, I'm done with this. So I think we're going to hang them that particular wreath with ribbon from um, up above. But Okay. I still have another question. Yeah. Um, are you running the heater in your house? No. Like at high, <laughs> you know, no, high heat? I, I hate the heater. Okay, so that's not... I was thinking, like, maybe it's especially warm in your home and they're just no, and peeling it's, off or... And it's dry, but it's not drier than any other year has been. I don't... It doesn't make sense. I don't know what's happening. I just feel like it, I'm going to blame 2020 because what else is there to do? Are they actual 3M command hooks yes. or are they a Bobo brand? No, no, no. 3M command hooks with 3M command hook backing stickies i'm not i'm not going third party on these i don't know i would tweet them and be like what the heck is happening this is not working this year maybe they changed the formula somehow or i don't know that's bizarre you know i tweeted to 3m last year because they were the source of my greatest holiday heartbreak and that is that they discontinued their pop-up tape dispensers yes that thing is fantastic Yes, and it's been gone for a couple of years, yeah. and I sent them a tweet last year 
thinking maybe there was some place I could find them. But no, they're like, we discontinued it. And I don't know what they were thinking because those were amazing. You just wore it like a little bracelet and you just pop, pop, pop little tabs of tape. Now you have to pull and tear and like set up your little tabs of tape along the corner of the table so they're ready to go. I mean, I think that that item peaked before its time. It didn't get the love that it deserved. And that's why they pulled it. I'm pissed. I was at Target the other day shopping for uh, wrapping supplies and totally thought about that 3M thing. I was like, RIP. So sad. It's gone. It definitely caused you to spend more on tape than you would have with just a roll of tape. But for the holidays with the number of gifts we wrap, it was well worth it, in my opinion. Yeah. Like, me too. If you guys don't know what we're talking about, I will post a picture of it. In the show notes. Well, in other news. Yeah, go ahead. 2020 continues to just 2020. (laughs) The hits keep on coming. (laughs) You guys, Orange County's on fire again. I actually, have you looked this morning? I haven't even looked at the progress. Well, at the time of this recording, it was... 10% contained. Oh, that's good news, which I know doesn't sound like a lot, but for the uh, wildfire uninitiated, really once they start to get any measure of containment on it, that's a good sign because they're breaking it down. Um, You may remember that about a month ago we had a wildfire. I was evacuated. We were fine. It was just, you know, very dramatic and scary. So two nights ago, The dog wakes me up at 1130, which is unusual. And I take him out. And as soon as I open the door, I can smell the smoke. And the Santa Ana winds had started a few hours earlier. So I go get my phone. And, of course, everyone is posting on Facebook. It's only like 1130 p.m. But I've been asleep for an hour at this point. (laughs) And I go to my trusty Twitter location. And there's a small structure fire that had spread to the brush. And at that point, it was seven acres. But it was in the area Very near where the last fire had started, which, of course, we were evacuated. So I thought, great, now I have to stay up and watch this damn thing because I don't want to think about like a 3 a.m. knock on my door asking me to evacuate, which people I know did have that night. So it went in the opposite direction and we had the buffer of the previous burn scar on our side. So there's the tiniest silver lining in the world. But Many people were evacuated. There were homes that were damaged in this. And if you have been evacuated or displaced, we're very sorry. And the added insult to injury of all of this is the way each city handles evacuations is different. But what I noticed is some of the cities were not offering evacuation shelters because of COVID. Holy shit. So they were posting on Twitter saying, like, go to your family or go to a hotel because of COVID. (laughs) We're not offering shelter. And on the one hand, I get it. You don't want a bunch of people gathering. Now, in the last evacuation, our city did offer shelters, and I'm sure that they had COVID protocols in place. But, okay, we're avoiding our fam. We're not combining bubbles right now because of COVID. Many people do not feel comfortable going to a hotel. So I think people were put in awkward positions when they have to evacuate in the middle of a pandemic because you have to choose from a series of bad choices. Yeah, they're sleeping in their cars or whatever. Like, that's awful. Yeah. So we hope everyone is okay. <sighs> I'm just real done with it. <laughs> well... Just- So next for the Southern California weather, if anybody's dying to know, it will eventually rain and then all those burned areas will turn into a landslide. Yeah. So just wait for it. Mudslide warnings for all of Orange County and it's unpleasant. That's weather talk with Megan and Wendy. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) So in in other great news, uh, we are... are, uh, been notified that we are basically on a stay-at-home order again almost. here in Southern California. Al- almost. almost. It's very close. It's going to happen. You know, probably before the weekend is over. Um, mm. We're recording this a couple days early. And I am so frustrated by this. Not by the stay-at-home order itself. Y'all know. I love a rule. <laughs> Give me a rule. I'll follow it. <laughs> but one, the messaging was done so badly. Look, I'm not a marketing professional. I'm not a politician. I'm not a public health expert. And yet, 
I could have created a rule and then copied it and pasted it to the multiple places that it needed to go. Because yesterday, the government's messaging, and I was particularly interested in schools. What's happening to schools? Depending on where you looked, either schools with a waiver could stay open or schools that were already open could stay open or schools could stay open only if there was another not an available virtual option. <laughs> now, our district has cleared it up. They're staying open. Oh, they said they? they have confirmation from the governor that the schools that are open are staying open. And honestly, I have said from the beginning, I do think we should prioritize schools over many other options. I'm fine with the district's choice in that. Of course, there are many that are not. That's another story entirely. <laughs> but I also feel like, and I think we talked about this yesterday, I don't think anything's going to change. I don't think so either. I think people are going to put their uh, own needs above public health needs. It's, And I think it's because we, we are in month 84 of this. So... <laughs> Here's the problem. The It's regional, so it's not by county. They broke it down into five regions, which I actually think was smart, and it's based on ICU capacity. So when the ICU capacity drops below 15%, this new stay-at-home order is activated for a period of three weeks. Now, today, as of the recording of this episode, it's December 4th. If it were to be activated today, three weeks would end on December 25th. Here's why I think this is a useless stay-at-home order. One, Yes, it closes some things. Restaurants are now closed even to outdoor dining once this goes into effect. It doesn't close stores, although it does reduce their capacity. There are many, many things that are still open. They're just saying don't. Basically, what they're trying to say is don't gather, don't go in big groups. And I feel like people that have not already canceled their holiday plans for 2020 are not now going to be further incentivized to do so. I wish they would. I Mm -hmm. think it would be great. (laughs) I have two issues. One Mm. is I watched a uh, press conference from the White House, Mm -hmm. and um, I don't even know what her name is, and I'm whatever, but she was like, Christmas is happening. Like, she was basically saying, like, if riots can happen and Mm -hmm. store looting can happen, Christmas is going to happen. And so I just, the messaging is. And I've said it before, it's so messed up because you have it one way from one politician, one way from another state government. Like, it's such a mess all over. And so people are just going to do what they want to do. Period. End of story. They need to pay people to stay home if they want them to stay home. End of story. If they did that, people would stay home. And even the governor was saying, look. We just want to slow things down to the point that we can handle the influx of cases until we can get the vaccines out. I think they are at the point where they know we're not going to stop this. The vaccine really is kind of our end goal. And we just need to perhaps not have people overflowing out the doors of hospitals for the next few months as we try and get to that point. And well, that that brings up the other question. Have hospitals done any kind of like... Uh, looked at their capacity issues, their, their workforce issues f- from what they learned in March? Like, do we have overflow spaces for um, patients? Do we have additional PPE? Do we have additional ventilators? Did that happen? Or are we still working with the same number of ICU beds as we did in March? Well, there's a couple issues there. So I was reading some of the things that the governor was saying. I can no longer watch him on television. Look, I voted for the guy, but I'm just, I'm kind of done. So, me too. God, I'm so glad you said that. But, I was like, gruesome newsome is on the TV again. I can't. I, I voted for him too. I can't handle it. I'm so done with him. And I feel like he has blown his, I know he had a 2024 presidential bid in mind. I feel like. Not happening. Done. Like, there's just going to be photos of him in French laundry. Yep. <laughs> For days, and his campaign will be over before he, he makes had to have that dinner. The primaries. Had to have, had that, to dinner. have that dinner. Wow! And I can't listen to his uh, gravelly voice for one more minute. So I <laughs> catch the highlights afterwards. And I was that he was listing. You know, we don't really at this point have a PPE problem. We have the ventilators, and it's not so much a s- issue of space in the hospitals. It's that ICUs are so specialized, and they require you know, specialized training for people to work there. And so while we have the ventilators, it's also a personnel issue. You know, we can find room for these people, but we have doctors and nurses who are burnt out, who are also getting sick 
And I know that in one local hospital, I was there trying to hire as fast as they possibly can. And they just don't have the personnel. So I think they have been trying. And I don't know across the board if that's the case. But I think there's a number of issues beyond just space. I just take a deep breath. I went for a long walk with the dog this morning by myself. Nice. Just tried to breathe and breathe in that smoky air. It actually was quite beautiful this morning. You couldn't have known there was a wildfire. I was surprised. (laughs) But uh... I just need a week without disaster. (laughs) I don't. I don't. I don't know how to put. I. I am hanging on so hard to January 1st, thinking that things are going to magically change when the, <laughs> when the calendar changes. And I know that's not the case, but I, when is this going to end? When I have a question happen? for you. Yeah. Yeah. Have you yeah. seen the movie, any of the Final Destination movies? The first one. It's one of my favorites. <laughs> okay. I've never <laughs> seen them. Okay. <laughs> but I'm going somewhere with this. My understanding is that it's basically about like death is coming for you and it's going to get you, right? Like you can, if you escape it, it's going to find you in another way. Am I uh-huh. correct in my understanding of the movie? Death Loosely. doesn't discriminate. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. I yes, feel it, like yeah. I'm living my own 2020 final destination where 2020 is determined to break me. And it's like, <laughs> you're still standing. We're going to keep throwing it at you. I was Damn. thinking about... What? That is dark. <laughs> it is. But I was thinking about, you know, it's been all the summer. And over the summer, I had a ridiculous litany of health issues. And at one point, one of the doctors, based on actually faulty information that fortunately turned out to be a mistake, believed that I had advanced gallbladder cancer. And... Don't ever Google gallbladder cancer because it has a survival rate of 11%. Like, that was what we were dealing with in the summer. That turned out not to be the case, fortunately. But I was just thinking about that. That was just a couple months ago. (laughs) And the number of things that has happened since then, I I can't do anything but laugh about it. But I I do feel like 2020 is just going to keep coming. It's going to get you at some point, huh? (laughs) I saw a meme that said, like, what if 2021 tells 2020 to hold my beer? (laughs) So, yeah. Yikesies, yikesies. Okay, we need to transition to my favorite story of the week. It makes me laugh and brings me joy every single time I think about it. And that is (laughs) that Wendy straight up trolled a local <laughs> Orange County celebrity. I mean, okay. Let's back up a little bit. I'm not a perfect person. I have my <laughs> moments. I'm easily influenced when somebody tells me I need to do something. I did it. Um, okay. So I will start the story with that. I am in a Facebook group that is full of people who are fans of the Housewives franchise. Mm -hmm. And in that Facebook group, somebody posted an Instagram photo of a local housewife, former, um, who was having a party. I'm not going to get that specific, but she was having a party during a pandemic. And um, she was showing all these, it was beautiful, like a drone video of this glamorous party they were having. And um, so the call to action was to troll this Instagram account. And I did. (laughs) And so what happened is whoever was running their Instagram account was just immediately like deleting and blocking, deleting and blocking. So um, I put my... uh, my two cents on there and was deleted and blocked. The other issue we're running up against is not so much that people are not going to change and they're not going to adjust their life to account for the fact that we're in the middle of a global pandemic, but the fact that they can't keep it off social media. Yeah. It's one thing that people are doing these things. It's another thing that it doesn't even occur to them not to share it. Yeah. That's the part that blows my yeah. mind. Well, from what I understand is that the public pressure has uh, not been so kind to them, so they pulled it down. Oh, <gasps> yeah, it's gone. Ah! <laughs> mm-hmm. 
I mean, I can laugh about it now, but at the moment when I saw it, I was so pissed off because I was like, look at all the things that are canceled. And I think this was just comes after like learning that uh, youth sports is not going to happen. CIF is completely gone. Um, your favorite Christmas party is not happening. Like, you know, we're in a pandemic and people are losing out on everything. And then these jerks decide like, we're going to show this beautiful drone um, movie of our glamorous party. Ugh. I just was pissed. I'm glad you got a good laugh out of it. So did I. It brought me so much joy. I read it to my husband. It made me so happy. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we're going to take a quick break. Today's episode is brought to you by Celestial Shell, which is the most beautiful collection of fabric handmade items that you have ever seen in your life. Truly, I am so envious of Michelle's talent with the sewing machine. Yes, she makes face masks. Yes, she makes coffee cozies, but she also has these beautiful fabric bins that you can use for just about everything. I mean, don't you feel like put it in a basket and it's automatically decor? The answer is Yes. She has holiday prints and also prints that will work year round so you can get your holiday gifts ordered just in time or you can order something for yourself when your January organizing kick kicks in. You can find her at clestealshell.com and yes, we will leave that link in our show notes. All right, friends. Since last week's episode was heavy and dark and tearful, this week we're just having fun. And Wendy and I each created a list of questions for each other. We have not seen each other's questions. And we're just going to chat, throw yeah. questions at each other, and answer them on the spot. And let me tell you, the theme here is not too deep. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to go first? You go first. Okay. Would you rather look like a potato or feel like a potato? feel like a potato <laughs> so vain i i, I think... already feel like a potato <laughs> me too <laughs> scale of one to ten how good are you at keeping secrets Ooh, um uh, an eight oh. eight and a half as an adult as a younger oh, sure. 20 year old for, forget it i was like a two <laughs> Oh, my turn. Um, <laughs> favorite toy growing up? Well, I had this hand-sewn, like, fabric dollhouse that was small. Like, I don't know, maybe one foot square, and it Velcroed open. Um, mm -hmm. And it had, my grandmother made it, and it had little, like, cloth dolls. And it had a little, like cloth bed that she had made there was like cardboard inside to make the headboard and had little chairs um, and my mom still has it at her house that my daughter has played with and I as an adult have a lot of nostalgic feelings about it so I don't know that it was my favorite gift as a child truly cannot remember myself being a child right now <laughs> on this spot but um, I do remember that toy fondly that's sweet Favorite childhood TV show? Ooh, gosh. Man, I grew up on TV, so um, I really enjoyed Family Ties. Oh. I'm thinking younger childhood, not teenager when 90210 was, no, you know, no. my favorite. Yeah. But uh, Family Ties. Oh, no, here it is. Facts of Life. That's what it was. Oh, yes. My husband has been rewatching old episodes. You take the good, you take the bad. Yeah, I loved it. Loved it. If you had to leave this city or country for good, where would you go? Ireland. Oh. Because you've been there it's and you so know what pretty. to expect. Yeah. And also, I just want to listen to people talk to me all day long because that's the best accent in the world. Well, I feel like you would just like fit right in, too, with that red hair. There's not <laughs> many redheads in Ireland as people suspect there are going to be. Really? I mean, I've been there twice. I don't think I've seen a single other redhead while we were there. No way. Are you Irish at all? Yeah, very Irish. Well, I don't know. My maiden name is not Doyle, but it should be. It's a long story. <laughs> but truly, that's actually, my maiden name is not a blood relative to me. 
Why is Fun that? Fact. Because my great great grandmother was married to a man whose last name was Doyle, and one day a woman showed up at her door and said, "Are you?" Mrs. Doyle, and she said yes, and she said, so am I. They were married to the same man. So she divorced him, remarried someone else who then adopted her children, and that man's last name is my maiden name, but Doyle is my is the, the name that I claim. I'm very Irish. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Megan Doyle. I mean, come on. That's an Irish name if you ever heard it. It is, for sure. Favorite type of tea? Oh, for me, English black tea. All right. Uh, which actor would play you in a movie? Oh, man. I just saw someone answering this on Instagram, and she was like, I hate answering this question because I don't want to pick someone pretty because then people will oh, think please. too highly of myself. <laughs> Give me a break. I'll tell someone... you who I want for me, and I'll tell you who I want for you. Someone really awkward would play me. Um, no, 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 no. You really think of someone? People are screaming right now. You I'm think they you. have somebody in mind? Yes. I would want Emma Stone to play me. No. I know she has a weird mouth. Okay, people don't need to. <laughs> what? She has a weird, like, she, she. Yeah, her smile is like weird. Yeah. She, she yeah. forms her weird words oddly sometimes. Okay, tell me who, tell me I'm wrong. Oh my God, Tammy Taylor, Connie Britton. Oh, that's a good one. Yes, that would be How me can very you happy. not see it? <laughs> Do you ever post inspirational quotes on social media? <sighs> I uh, maybe in the past. Oh, well, I know I pin them, but I don't know if I post them on social. I'm sure I have. You share them to your Instagram story. I, you're right. I do, <laughs> but they're never in the feed. So True. they're only in the stories. <laughs> if you could either never have coffee again or never have dessert again, which would it be? You bitch. <laughs> <laughs> it would be coffee, right? Uh, that's like a no-brainer to me. You yeah, like drink I could tea. find another hot drink to choke down. <laughs> but yeah, never have dessert. Like life without candy is not a life worth living. Okay, say good day, mate, in an Australian accent. That's not a question. All right, good. I'll go to my next. Wait, one. wait, let me try though. <laughs> wait, hold on. I can I can usually do like accents and impersonations of people if I hear it, but um. I can't do it like cold. Good day, mate. I don't know. (laughs) I think that's one of those phrases that even if you say it without an accent, it kind of sounds like you have an accent just because. Okay, you try. Good day, mate. (laughs) Good day, mate. See, I I bet people listening are trying at home right now. (laughs) Would you rather drink one gallon of ketchup or one gallon of mustard? Ketchup. (laughs) couldn't do it do you like ketchup at all occasionally i prefer mustard though (laughs) what about what do you put on your french fries i like mustard on my french fries but i do use ketchup yes i know i know i'm a monster what's your favorite car bread pasta rice or potatoes oh ooh, bread pasta rice rice is out or potatoes what's that movie (laughs) hold on do you know what movie I'm talking about? <laughs> Sophie's Choice. Bread. I would choose the same thing. Yeah. Oh, would you rather be a supermodel, a genius, or super rich? Not a supermodel. Uh, look, the truth is I'd rather be super rich, but I do think I'd do good things with my money. Okay. That's okay. But can't you be a genius and then become super rich if you're a genius? Or be super rich and then, like, get tons of education? Just, like, spend your time in class? I would love to go back to school right now. Oh, me too. So your choice is super rich? (laughs) Because I feel like it opens the doors. Let's not pretend like money doesn't provide opportunity. Money doesn't buy you class. What's your ideal outside temperature? Uh, 75 with a cool breeze. (laughs) I like it sunny and cool. 75 is not cool. With a cool breeze. Yes, it is. Okay. You're like a 72. No. 65. Get out. I hate being hot. I hate any chance that I might sweat. Okay. If you were invited to attend Hogwarts, which Hogwarts house would you choose? Well, look, I think everyone likes to think 
that they're a Gryffindor because the Gryffindors were the cool kids. But the reality is I'd be a Hufflepuff. And there's nothing wrong with a freaking Hufflepuff. What color, I would be what like, color is that? What color house is that? Be yellow. I mean, I was kind of a nerdy kid, so I might also have been a Ravenclaw, but maybe not quite smart enough. It's really well, one to ponder heard. about, huh? <laughs> I mean, I've been sorted on Pottermore, which I won't use anymore because J.K. Rowling is trash. But, of course, I was a Hufflepuff. Can you touch your toes without bending your knees? No. I am the. I have the worst flexibility. The worst. Me too, my entire I, I life. Wish. Me too. I swear I've never been that kid that could do a split. No. Nothing. Nope. And actually, earlier this year, I thought, what if I worked on that every single day if I could do a split by the end of the year? But... That didn't happen. So, <laughs> can can you learn to do a split as a forty five year old woman? I wonder. What do you like to be complimented on? I like when people say like, "Oh, you're a good mom." So but that's that okay. Happen very often. Oh, stop! But the cup. There have been a couple times in my life where someone has said, "Oh, I heard something you said the other day." And now I've implemented it. Like when it comes to my kids, and I was like, "That's like the nicest compliment ever." Yeah, that's great. Dark chocolate or milk chocolate? Dark. Yeah. Easy question. What are these softballs you're throwing at me? <laughs> what is your favorite scent? Oh, peppermint. All year long. Uh, huh. yeah. I like minty scents. Peppermint, spearmint. My favorite. I can't, like a eucalyptus mint. I love a mint. Fresh mint scent. <laughs> okay. Would you rather come face to face with a miniature hippopotamus or a giant cockroach? Both are in a bad mood. <laughs> How big is giant cockroach? Hippopotamus this... sized. This is not a hard question. I think the hippopotamus. <laughs> That's the right answer. Right? Look, a hippopotamus will kill you, but a miniature one, he can't get you between his jaws. So, Oh, I hadn't thought about that. I'm just picturing this life-size cockroach. Yeah, that's terrifying. <laughs> yes. When is the last time you wrote a letter to someone? On paper. Yeah. April. April? Do you remember what it was for? <laughs> It was like a, it's a pandemic. Hi. <laughs> oh, yeah, I did those too. I wrote note cards to a bunch of people. Did I send yeah, one to you? You did. <laughs> oh, I don't remember. I sent one to a bunch of people. I mean, I talk to you every day. So like, why would I, I send you a note card? That was very nice. I like getting mail. <laughs> when you fly on a plane, do you wear a neck pillow? Yes. Yes, Bonus I do. question. Name the brand. It's a turtle one. It's that turtle. The turtle or whatever it's called. That's what it's called. Changed your life, didn't it? It totally did. I will post a picture in our show notes. Who would you want as your celebrity BFF? Oh, Dan Levy. From Schitt's Creek? Yes. <laughs> That's funny. That's so random, Megan. I adore him. And also, I have this... I never want to meet celebrities that I enjoy, mostly because... I do not think I am cool enough. So I feel like, you know, in a celeb, I know this is like a best friend situation. So assuming we're actually friends, but like those celebrity meet and greets, I do not want someone to pretend to be interested in meeting me. That, no, I know people are like, I just want to meet them and say hello. No, no, that makes me so uncomfortable because I know that they don't actually want to meet me. Uh, but that makes me like deeply uncomfortable to think about because I'm like, I'm not funny enough to be his friend. But yes, would adore being his friend. Why do you feel like you have to be funny enough to be his friend? Like, I think, you think funny you just people like to jokes? surround themselves nah. with funny people. No way. I don't think so. I think I think people genuinely like to hang out with people that they have a common thread with. And that might just be kindness. It doesn't have to be <laughs> It doesn't have to be like hilarity. I know. I'm sure comedians aren't sitting around like, and yesterday at the bar, whatever. I, yeah, I don't they're not to start cracking a joke. jokes to each other. <laughs> yesterday at the bar. That's not a joke. I don't know. <laughs> it's a wonder my stand-up career never took off. <clears throat> if you were given the opportunity to fly into space, given today's technology, would you take it? Not in a million years. <laughs> No, either. thank you. I don't like flying in an airplane. I'm definitely not going to space. Space nope. is one of the two most terrifying things. You know the when world. they show those like old videos of like preparing for space travel and they're like floating through like non gravity air or whatever it's called. Oh yeah, zero gravity. All I can think about is throwing up. Like absolutely, I would just be trying to like hold on to whatever I've eaten. 
Never See, that's not that. the part that scares me at all. I could do zero gravity, like, in a Ugh. room that's on the ground. Nope. <laughs> it's the being in space, and you can float off into nothingness, and nobody will ever find you part that terrifies me. Does that happen? I mean, have you seen the movies? <laughs> I don't like science fiction movies, first of all. I would be terrified of something blowing up. That happens. Yeah, that happens. No, I just mean, like, I don't think space movies are science fiction. Like, Star Trek is science fiction, but, like, we went to Mars? I mean, I guess it's, like, lightly science fiction. But like, anyway. Houston, we have a problem. Like, Apollo yeah, 13 not is science not science fiction. fiction. That's historical fiction. Yeah, that's not science fiction because we can go to space. Okay, whatever. <laughs> I don't like space stuff. What food do you dislike and why? I don't like... Yeah, that's a hard one for me because I like most everything. Yeah, me too. Um, Spaghetti. What? Yeah. I don't... Ever, like, why? I like pasta. You just don't like spaghetti noodles? I don't mind the noodles. I don't like, like, a spaghetti with a red sauce. And that's what? to say I'm never going to eat it. But, like... I don't, when people, like, if you were to go to a restaurant and order spaghetti, <gasps> I cannot think of anything worse. Well, see, this is classic Megan and Wendy here. <laughs> because I love a spaghetti with a red sauce, and I would definitely order it in a restaurant. I'm so sad to hear that. Plenty of people, I know my dad, I've been in restaurants with him, like Italian restaurants, he'll order spaghetti. I mean, obviously... It's a classic. It's like a burger, right? Like plenty of people like spaghetti. I I don't know what it is. I just I'm not the biggest fan of a red sauce to begin with. I wouldn't pick a red sauce as my favorite sauce on a pasta to what? begin with. Mm -mm. Oh my goodness. Mm -mm. When people stand for a standing ovation, are you usually one of the earlier people to stand or one of the later? Never, dude. I'm a follower. <laughs> I'll stand up if everybody else stands up. You won't lead the ovation. No, because what if I'm wrong about standing up or, you know what I mean? like, And then you're just standing there by yourself, clapping yeah. away. Bravo! No. Yeah. I mean, if it's my kid on stage, I'm the first to stand up. I would absolutely. But if any other, no, no, follower. <laughs> Which TV sitcom would you like to star in? Currently running? Sure. Are there any sitcom? Uh, Ted Lasso. Oh, that's a good answer. That is a great answer. Mostly just because I think everyone on that show is so freaking funny. I would just want to be around them all day long. Okay. Would you rather wake up to an air horn blowing in your ear every day or wake up and have to run four miles every oh, day? Oh, Jesus. Oh, air horn. Yeah, air I mean, horn. <laughs> That's what it's It's, it's over fast. <laughs> <Yeah>. and <laughs> Yep. And then you're done. <laughs> yeah. No. Four Running miles. four miles. No way. Uh, for the last question, I hope you have an answer to this. What is the first book you remember really loving? The Babysitter's Club series. Aww, that's cute. Yeah, I was obsessed. Um, has your daughter read that? I am reading the original versions to her right now. I have the actual original versions of the first six. They don't, they re- published them yeah yeah all the other ones are being republished as graphic novels which i have yeah. no problem with i'm just not interested in reading them that way and i wish they would republish the original versions of the others you can find them online um, i just haven't hunted them down but we watched the series over the summer or whenever it was released i don't at some point in the last nine months that we've been in our house we watched <laughs> the series and she loved it and yeah. i loved it i thought it was so well done so then we started reading the books together so we still read my husband and i alternate reading to her every night nice all right everybody thank you so much for listening to this episode of long story no, short the we're podcast. not done we're not oh we have to do megan and wendy approved <laughs> all right hey how about we take a quick break and we'll be right back with megan and wendy approved <laughs> all right it's time for megan and wendy approved where we share something we're loving and Mine may or may not come as a surprise to anybody, but I have a new favorite flavor of Haribo gummies. Oh. <laughs> I was in I was in World Market the other day. Uh-huh. Doing my one annual holiday stocking stuffer mini gift sweep through the store. And they have the best in-store selection of Haribo candies I've ever seen anywhere locally. 
So I always pick some up when I'm there, and I've already eaten every single thing that I bought while I was there, so we're going to have to go back. But it is the Haribo Penguins, and if you've ever seen the gummies that have the little fluffy marshmallow layer on the back, that's what these are. So they're like half gummy, half white marshmallowy foam. And the flavors of the gummy, in case anybody is wondering, is watermelon, orange, blackberry, apple, and tropical flavors. One of them tastes pineapple-y to me. So I I was going to say all in one, but they're... No, they're like different colors. <laughs> okay, okay. Anyway, I enjoy them. I love a Haribo watermelon. I like the standard gummy bears. I like the peach slices very much. I like the star mix that you can only get in the UK. Not the uh, snar mix that they have that they sell here. The star mix that they sell here is fine, but the star mix that they sell in the UK is far superior. That is so weird. It has different it has different items in it. I don't know why they don't sell it here as the same item, but mm. the penguins really uh Hit the spot. I, would, I wouldn't I would mind a full stocking full of penguins. Oh, exciting. Does your husband know that? Does Santa I'm, know that? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send a screenshot to Santa. So mine is real different than yours. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've been wanting for a really, really, really long time a bench on my front porch. Yes. So I found one on Amazon, which I was a little bit scared to buy it off of Amazon because you never know what exactly you're going to get. But it's perfect. I built it yesterday. I mean, I put it together yesterday. I was proud of myself that I like put together this bench and it's on my front porch and now it's all decorated cute for Christmas. I'm in love with this bench. It's called Decor Therapy Outdoor Bench White on Amazon. It's really cute. We posted a picture on our Instagram stories yesterday, but Wendy will put a picture in the show notes. So cute. And you I put little it. cute pillows on it that you can swap out with the season. I totally thought about that. I was like, okay, what's my next pillow going to be? It's probably going to be a Valentine's Day one. Like, oh, I'm so yeah. excited. You're going to have a whole pillow wardrobe for this I bench. I am. I'm so excited. Until I'm sure it gets all dusty. And we tend to have birds on our porch a lot. So I'm sure it's going to be covered in bird shit eventually. And yeah, I'm going to go sit on it today. <laughs> you should. Take a book out there. <laughs> This is where I'm going to yeah, be. Take your coffee out there in the morning. That sounds yeah. nice. Uh, I'm going to come know. over and sit on your bench. Okay. <laughs> You're going to come out in the morning and be like, oh, you're back. Okay. <laughs> Everybody, thank you so much for listening to this episode of Long Story Short, the podcast. Hey, we got a couple new ratings and reviews in last week, and it was so fun. So we would love it if you would continue to leave those. And please don't think, eh, they don't really care that much because we care so we much. Care. When I discover a new one, I screenshot it, immediately send it to Wendy, and then we celebrate. So please do not think that your ratings and reviews don't matter because A, they matter in iTunes and they matter to us. 2020 has been so hard on us, you guys. Give us this one little thing. <laughs> and we'll be back on Thursday, and we will be discussing Christmas in Evergreen. Bells are ringing the fourth installment in the Evergreen series on Hallmark's Countdown to Christmas. Wendy had not seen a single one prior to this year. I'm so pumped for this conversation. So make sure you come back for that, and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.